So I got this new MacBook. I ran into a lot of issues trying to get uh, some kind of decent quality with these new Macs that I heard are incredible at this. So I just wanted to share what I've discovered so far that has made a night and day difference. There's different trade-offs. It is a work in progress. So I'm currently running an M1 Pro, the 14 inch MacBook, 16 gig of RAM. You know, there's two M1 Pros. There's one with the 10 core and the one with the, is it 14 core? I don't know. Mine's a smaller one with the, with the 10 core. So the settings I found that seem to be the sweet spot for streaming on YouTube and recording. So we go to our preferences in OBS. Now there are some requirements to this. I am using OS 10 Ventura public beta. Now, by the time some people are seeing this video, especially in the future, it's, it seems to take several weeks for my videos to get any kind of traction. So probably by the time you're watching this video, Ventura has already been released. OS 10 13, I believe. You do need it for what I'm doing. The public beta has been stable. I'm on beta two right now. It's been stable for me. So why you need that, the biggest feature is a desktop capture with sound capture. So from the Windows world, you know, you just add a display capture source in a scene and that takes care of, you know, video and audio. Unfortunately, apparently in the Mac world, that's not how it's worked where you'll have a desktop capture, but you wouldn't have any sound and you had to install third party tools just to be able to get sound. Well, as of Ventura and above and OBS 28 beta, which again, I'm on OBS 28 beta two right now. But by the time you see this video, a lot of people, it's already going to be released by now. So OBS 28 actually has native M1 Apple Silicon support. And that's the biggest benefit of OBS 28. And that's what's so exciting about it because it's not running under some kind of emulation and eating tons of resources. It's so efficient. So after these configurations, these set up with OBS 28, I'm sitting at about right now recording about 10% CPU usage. And whenever I'm streaming to YouTube at 1440p at a decent quality, I sit at about 11, 12% CPU usage. It's been solid. So for the actual settings, you have your stream tab right here. Now this is pretty straightforward. You'll just want to make sure that you have this checkbox marked for ignore streaming service setting recommendation after you set up your YouTube and authenticate and connect your account. Then when we go to output, and it's not gonna let me edit that right now because I'm recording with this, we wanna switch this to advanced. It will probably default to simple, so you're not gonna see all of this. We need to switch this to advanced. After you switch it to advanced, the encoder we're gonna pick, here's the thing. We want the Apple VT H264 hardware encoder. Now, this thing has been a problem in the past. Support for it is still relatively new, but the beautiful thing about it is it is using dedicated hardware, kind of like how NVIDIA and NV Inc work whenever you do that and it's offloading the load onto your GPU. That's kind of how this is working. So we can do the regular X264 CPU encoding and we can actually get better quality doing that right now with this setup that I have. However, it's going to murder your CPU. I, I have fluctuations on the low end of 30%, but it averages around 50% of an M1 Pro uh, usage at 1440p. So I'm, I've got my retina display that's built into the laptop. And right now what you are actually seeing and what I capture as my display capture, the Mac OS screen capture, they call it, is actually an external 1440p monitor. And that's what we're on right now. So for here, we set that to Apple VT H264 hardware encoder. I have CBR set for the rate control. I'm currently using 18,000 for my bitrate setting. You can fluctuate, you can play with that a little bit if you want to. I try to stay within YouTube's recommend, recommended settings for streaming. Here's, the th here's a big kicker right here, or keyframes. I've never gone that high on keyframes. Official support for YouTube is as high as four. Uh, that does help your quality quite a bit. I had to do that to get the macro blocking down because the Apple VT hardware encoder out of the box is kind of weird. And if you just use your typical settings, which is what I was doing, you're going to end up with all kind of weird macro blocking and it's just going to look funny and not great quality at all. 
And it, again, it's still not going to be as crisp as X264 or in my experience, even as crisp as my windows machine with NV ink, but it's, it's getting closer. It's getting considerably closer. So I set that to keyframe four for that interval. Now the trade-off for that, you're going to get considerably better quality, but you are going to have a little more latency. So whenever I set up my stream key on YouTube, I just use, you know, just go through, create your stream, however you normally would. Now in your YouTube dashboard, just make sure you go back and I set that to low latency. I don't do ultra low and I don't do normal. Normal is going to give way too much latency. I do low latency and I average about five or six seconds. And it depends on where people are in the world. There's a fluctuate too of how much latency they're going to have. And when I say latency, I'm talking about whenever you're trying to chat with someone and how long it takes for your video response to get back to them. So keyframe four profile, I have that set to high. Another big one that really helped a ton, completely turn off B frames. That seems to be very important for the Apple VT hardware encoder for whatever reason. I'm not so technical that I know the nitty gritty of why that is in general, but whenever I uncheck use B frames, that has helped a ton with the quality as well. So those are the, those are the big high points right there. The next one you're mainly going to be concerned with is video. Now, when you're streaming to YouTube, one of the things that I mentioned on several other videos and other people have mentioned it as well, to guarantee you're going to get the VP nine Kodak, which is just makes YouTube process your stream at a better quality. You have to send them at least 1440p 60. That's what we do. So even if you don't have, let's say a 1440p display, and I covered this in other videos, you can have the canvas as a 1080p and then upscale it, output scaled resolution 2560 by 1440. And you may have to type that in, but for my monitor, it's a 1440p monitor. So I set my canvas at 1440p. So whatever you do with your primary gaming display or whatever it is, whatever resolution your primary display that you want to capture is going to be, I recommend you set the canvas size to that as well, and then go ahead and set the output. So in this case, it helps me quite a bit. If you have 1440p display, that's perfect because then you can just stream at 1440p as well natively, and it doesn't have to scale anything. So that'll make it even sharper. I'm in FPS value. I set that to 60. Most people want 60 FPS and you're done. Those are for the video quality settings. This isn't meant to be, you know, an entire polished inside out, you know, how to stream a YouTube video. I have other videos like this. This is a Mac specific, just covering the struggles that I've been and what I've come together with so far that I think is a decent workable solution that it doesn't quite hit the high point that I've been able to do with Nvidia and windows and you know, those settings. But remember we're using, so OBS 28 beta right now, as time I'm making this video, I'm also using Ventura, uh, Mac OS 10, 13 beta at the time of this video, we're using a lot of beta gear. So we do have that disclaimer. Those are the two biggest pieces of that. Go ahead and apply in OBS 28. You have an apply button right here whenever you make changes, which is nice. I like that. And then, okay. And then you're done. So go ahead and give that a test and just, I'm curious what other people's results are. Let me know if you like the Mac OS 10 content. I'll plan on doing more of it. Thanks.